brain learning how to drive your happy brain hi it's me Kay Cook and as you know I'm here regularly to talk to you about happy brain and I'm delighted today to be able to talk very specifically about happy brain as a specialist application of NLP and who better to give us some reasons why happy brain as a specialist application of NLP is really important than the great and wonderful Dr. Richard Bandler. I feel like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> uh, yes, I, w I wanted to take a chance to tell people, especially those of you who quote unquote know NLP, to tell you that this is an application about how to work with children and working with children is different than working with adults. In some ways it's easier, in some ways it's more difficult, but this is gonna make it all easier. I want all of you to take what she's put in these books and these courses, learn it, because if you're really neurolinguistic programmers, you're hungry for new learning. And a lot of people look at things and go, oh, I already know this. Well, my guess is you don't. Give yourself a chance to learn something special because there are lots and lots of children and there's more of them all the time. Thank you so much, Richard. That's absolutely wonderful. And um, I wonder whether I could ask you one question on top of, on top of that. Thank you. Sure, you go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, so the question I have is, is a problem that I often face with uh, children who in NLP, we talk about well-formed outcomes and we encourage people to think about what it is they want. But of course, with children, we find that their well-formed outcomes come from their parents. And so there's a lot of conflict. And so a lot of my work is working in tandem with all the different component parts of the child system, the parents, the teachers. And so we have to have this multi-layered approach, I feel, when working with children. Do you have some advice for Well, that? Virginia Satir said, nobody lives in a vacuum. Mm. And she was one of the first people to find that if you took schizophrenics out of the hospital and stuck them in their family, they didn't seem so crazy. Mm. Uh, a lot of times when you're taking a kid by themselves and you say, what does the kid want? They give you a list of what they don't want, just like adults. Mm. You know, I don't want to feel bad. I don't want this. I don't want my brother to pick on me. And one of the things you have to understand about well-formed outcomes is that, is that with kids, what they really need is a good direction. And sometimes that direction is going to move through a lot of people that aren't going to be easy to change. Sometimes you have to, you got to get the adults around them to change a little bit to give them enough room to move. Sure. But they have to realize that the world in which they live is not always going to be a nice world. It's not always going to be easy. This political correctness nonsense of not giving kids grades or uh, letting them win a football game, right? I'm afraid the world isn't like that. It's very competitive, and they're going to have to learn that, you know, that, that it is determination and tenacity that while the outcome for somebody might be to spell better in school, the real outcome is to make them tenacious enough and smart enough to know there's always an easier, better way to get what you want. Mm. I, I, thank you so much. That's really important. So, so please, please, please get in touch with me and um, let, let's have a chat about how you can improve your skills working with children, working with families, so that we can all work to make this next generation much more strong, resilient, to think clearly, think on purpose, as Richard said. Well, I always like to catch everything ahead of time, and if you can catch it in children, we'll save ourselves a lot of clients in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, you for so good much. work. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Feelings, happy brain, learning how to drive your happy brain.